Would you drive a car that you could control with your mind alone? Nissan has invented this. So far, here's a look. By looking at a certain area in our brain, we can see these special firings that happen whenever an event that is different with the expectation of the driver appears. We are now decoding the signatures in real time and putting them back into the autonomous system in order to enhance the way this control is performed. So any small deviations from the way you would expect the vehicle to act can be corrected. So you will have a much more enjoyable autonomous driving experience. So Nissan is showing this technology off at CES. Um, this is not necessarily something we may see soon on the roads. It seems more like at this point uh, a concept, again, to use the word, a moonshot. Yes. Um, and it's called brain to vehicle technology. It's, it's interesting um, because we have seen similar technology in which the brain is able to control things such as perhaps prosthetics, um, experimental medicine, some high-tech fields. And in this, in this instance, we're seeing it for vehicles. I mean, I don't know if you could consider this an autonomous vehicle, but uh, the technology could be applied to so-called autonomous vehicles, uh, self-driving cars, as it were. Um, according to Nissan, the system will allow a passive driver to take control of an AV within 300 milliseconds, that's one third of one second, if a road event deviates from what was expected. So this could be used as a preventive measure. True, I think it's, yeah, and it's a per, uh, what was expected by the driver. So if anything that startles you, uh, if you're expecting to take a right and all of a sudden you see that there is no right to take, your brain, you know, you have a conscious or even subconscious at that speed reaction and the car goes, oh, that's something that is not expecting happening and <laughs> it can actually assist you in the operation of your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, I think, like, you're, I think you're right in saying that it's not necessarily something that will be a standalone feature, but if you're in an autonomous vehicle and you're sitting there hands off the wheel and you're just watching the car drive itself and all of a sudden something happens and you freak out and be like, ah, there's a dog in the road. Yes, the car will naturally use the you know infrared lasers and all the different technology, but it will also then tap into that signal from your brain being like unexpected event occurring. Oh, what I was saying though yeah. uh, was actually it's just not clear when this will hit the market. Yeah. Um, which is fine because it does seem like something yeah. that's highly experimental and theoretical at this point. Yeah, and how it would actually prove to be useful in a, in a marketplace setting. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you want to pay whatever amount this would cost to add that to your vehicle? Consider it something under development. Um, currently, it is being worked with the Nissan Research Center at Atsugi, Japan, 30 miles south of Tokyo. Uh, it's it's an idea, at least, and it's, it's an interesting idea because sometimes there are unknowables. Like in the case of AVs, it's people don't necessarily trust that the vehicle, the uh, self-driving car would exactly be able to do going exactly on. Yeah. <laughs> and reflect, reflexively respond to something exactly mm -hmm. in enough time to prevent some catastrophic accident. Um, but it's, uh, we'll, we'll consider it. At least, exactly, at and point. yeah, where you might track exponent, like if that technology takes off, you know, could it apply to this? But I, honestly, what I think it is, what I see that this technology could be useful for, is that not necessarily in cars, but then you could use that in other uh, in other avenues, whether it's surgeons and they're using robotically assisted, you know, surgery things like that, and that you know, it's preventative measures that oh, if like you don't as want, a fail safe, as a fail safe, that it starts to become a fail safe in other avenues. But if you can do this with a car mm -hmm. on a public road with people inside, and you can prove that it I works, I don't think those tests were on public roads. Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying like in the future, if one could prove the concept, like you're saying, very far in the future. Uh, that the concept having proved itself on such a large scale or I think a uh, you know black and white it either it works or everyone dies situation then I think people might accept that concept later on almost as if you could teleport if all of a sudden somebody teleported a living thing no one would care about oh yeah you can teleport uh, inanimate objects, no problem. But I wonder if it ch kind of changes what the idea of autonomous driving is because mm. I, it's I would then. trust the system more if everyone were in a self-driving car. Right, if what everyone problem, was on the same page, yeah. The problem what seems to cause accidents 
tends to be human error, someone responding the wild to the, yeah. uh, the self-driving vehicle. So if a person is controlling that ultimately, and I, I don't see how it's incredibly different, maybe mm. that's a positive thing for most people who may have skepticisms about the idea mm -hmm. or, or latent fears, which is okay. I mean, I know I don't feel that way, but yeah. it's it, we're all different. <laughs> Which is the problem was, in driving. I was just going to say, which makes as great as this is said. No, okay. Uh, I'm kidding. Nope. I'm kidding. Audience, would you want to control a car with your brain? Would you trust it to be able to understand what your frontal cortex is saying? Please let us know and please like and subscribe for more.